Hong Kong. A clash of cultures. Where East meets West. The most densely populated city in the world. Finding space for a new airport meant radical thinking. The result, a 40-kilometer long network of bridges, viaducts, causeways and tunnels. An island-hopping motorway and rail link leading from the city to the world's largest man-made island, Czech Lapcock. The new airport being built here was the biggest construction project in the world. SGB played a crucial part in the airport venture, supplying formwork and falsework systems for the bridges and the massive terminal building. Completing this huge contract relied on SGB's worldwide resources and its ability to solve complex problems with imaginative solutions. It was late in 1994 that SGB International was invited to tender for the airport formwork contract, the biggest in building history. Fairly early on, um, there was a sense of excitement beginning to permeate all the office because everybody, but everybody is involved in putting together a bit of this magnitude. Some of the young design engineers in the office were, were, were even approaching me then, asking me how we were to handle the, the on-site establishment and making and indicating that they'd actually like to be part of it, were we to succeed. So the pressure was on internally to succeed as well as externally. SGB has a long-standing international reputation, working on projects such as the Channel Tunnel between Britain and France, the Petronas Towers in Malaysia, the Getty Museum in the USA, and the Bainuna Tower in Abu Dhabi. Alongside major British companies like Balfour Beatty, Amec and Costain, and international groups such as Buig, Kumagai Gumi and Samsung. But the huge contract at Czech Lab Koch needed substantial backing as well as wide experience and proven abilities. SGB's parent company Molum, itself a leading UK construction company, agreed a funding facility of £6 million. SGB won the airport contract in early 1995. Plunged into a race to finish the airport, a project team was soon on site, led by Alex Anderson. They won the work on a Friday and they contacted me during February, um, asked me if I could get out there for Monday, but, you know, all things being reasonable, I had to go home and pack, so I did manage to get there on the Thursday, which I thought was doing not too badly. Uh, we looked to SGB as a group internationally, we pulled people in from the UK, we brought people in from South Africa, we brought people from Australia, people have come from Nepal to help us out. So it's a fairly international operation that we've been running here. Within two weeks, Alex Anderson was joined on site by the first four members of the design team. They began planning the false work which would use SGB's own standard components and started scheduling the delivery of thousands of fiberglass moulds. Working on an island meant the entire team commuted each day by motor launch from nearby Lantau and Hong Kong, where SGB had arranged accommodation. SGB had proposed at the tender stage that it would set up an on-site team to handle design, logistics and stock control. The big advantage in having an on-site office was that we could deal directly with BCJ, the main contractor. Our designers could deal with their designers, our logistics people could deal with their logistics people, and any financial matters that had to be sorted could be fixed immediately. Back in Hong Kong, the company's regional office staff were designing the special formwork and contacting manufacturers with the skills and ability to supply it. 2,000 tonnes of purpose-built steel formwork and other structures were eventually needed to achieve the high standard finishes required by the renowned British architect Sir Norman Foster. Uh, we need to know really what your capacity is. Before winning the contract, SGB had realised that delivery times in four key areas would be extremely tight. One was the mould for the GRP, for the forming of the trough slabs where we'd realised that of 40 kilometres of moulds had to be delivered in four and a half months. Uh, 380 column shutters had to be delivered in just 10 weeks. 
and the aluminium table forms had to be on site before any of the moulds were there uh, for, for erection purposes. To meet these demanding schedules, the company had made pre-bid agreements with suppliers and factories in Europe, Hong Kong and the Middle East, shortcutting normal purchasing procedures. We had uh, looked at Australia, the United States, at continental Europe, at the UK, as areas of sources of supply for moulds, but we had decided that the only area that was capable of producing moulds at the sort of rate that we needed was in the Middle East and we had identified two major factories there. As the road and rail links weren't yet complete, delivering equipment and materials was a major logistical challenge. During the whole period of construction, the only access to the island was by boat. This meant everything SGB needed, from steel plates to pencils, was shipped in by barge. The quantities were vast, 700 sea containers, 900 lorry loads, the delivery arrangements complex. SGB brought in a senior manager to head a logistics team controlling lorry and barge movements. A couple of staircases, so a thousand eye bolts and some accelerators. The on-site design team, now 10 strong, used a network of AutoCAD stations linked to the latest plotting hardware and by modem to the head office in Hong Kong. The team had to produce 3,500 drawings of the slab, lift and stairwells and external retaining walls. With more than 200 men on site, SGB was required to have its own dedicated safety officer. OK, Niran. Can you clip your safety belt higher, please? Once again, another SGB Group company was able to supply one of its top men at short notice. On site, SGB ensured safe working practices with regular toolbox safety talks and training sessions, simultaneously translated into Nepali. The suspended slabs of the terminal building would eventually cover an area of 300,000 square metres. To pour that much concrete in the time allowed required a revolutionary formwork system. SGB's contract winning bid proposed mobile table forms, the biggest 10 metres high and 15 metres long, which could travel within the building and be lowered or raised. The biggest, complete with steel beams and GRP moulds, weighed nine tonnes. With 11 of these placed together, 430 square metres of concrete slab could be poured in one go. To keep to schedule, they'd have to be stripped, moved and repositioned in just 30 hours. SGB recruited and trained 80 Nepalese workers as scaffolders to strike and move the towering aluminium table forms. With handovers between shifts and preparation whilst concrete was curing, each team member needed intimate knowledge of the work sequence. As the days passed, the teams moved around the clock working. To speed the process, SGB as a whole solutions supplier devised innovative methods of working. The company designed and supplied a sophisticated system of pneumatics to release the moulds from the cured concrete. A thousand metres of airlines connected the moulds to a huge compressor. Air at high pressure could then be delivered to any point on any mould. With the moulds free and the table safely lowered, compressed air was then used to move the table form to its next position. Small hover pads reduced the friction to almost zero. Nine tons of formwork floating on air and moved accurately by as few as three men. SGB also designed and manufactured transportation beams for the smaller table forms and for areas where the hover pads were impractical. The tables were raised 650 millimetres to their final position using a simple fail safe system of hydraulic jacking, combining speed with minimum effort. Then the plywood infill panels could be fitted, the steel reinforcing fixed into place, and the concrete poured.
The pencil line detail specified by the architect meant different shaped mouldings for every section of table form. SGB's on-site GRP facility cut and reshaped moulds, reducing costs and allowing for last-minute changes. They produced 10,000 on-site variations to exacting standards. The surface finish specified for many of the walls meant steel wall form panels were essential. A mixture of steel fabrication and standard SGB soldiers produced the right balance of strength and economy. Mobile gantries weighing a hundred tons each moved the panels along the passenger tunnels as work progressed. With three and a half thousand columns to cast, SGB designed and supplied 320 completely interchangeable circular column forms. Despite having a connection joint, the forms had to produce an F5 finish. So the faces were machined, ceiling rings added to prevent grout loss, and the ends were jig drilled. With SGB's formwork, concrete pouring was regularly at a world record level of 10,000 cubic metres a week. This allowed the main processing hall to be completed in less than nine months and the long embarkation arms in six months. An extraordinarily tight schedule. The main contractors, BCJ, are the first to acknowledge SGB's achievement. Uh, they've brought a high quality of formwork um, which has not always been available in the Hong Kong market to this project and uh, the sort of off-form concrete finishes that we're supplying uh, been, have been without question um, some of the best I've seen in Hong Kong. I think the way SGB have, have proved on this job that uh, their, their approach to a job is that they can gear up quickly. They've been able to, to, to get the necessary equipment, to get the necessary systems in place and provide the backup to enable us to get going smoothly and to finish the job in, as, in the time required. What's been created here is the biggest airport in the world. A landmark for the next millennium. And Hong Kong's gateway to the future. Building it called for the highest levels of organisation, efficiency and expertise. You don't think about the scale of this job on a day-to-day -day basis because you're busy dealing with the tiny things that make it work. But when you step back and look at it, it's two kilometres from one end to the other. 10,000 cubic metres of concrete are being cast here every week. That's the equivalent of two football fields, one metre thick in concrete, and all to an F5 finish. It's only now we can actually look back in hindsight and see what we actually have achieved, and I think it's quite remarkable. We've actually built an airport in nine months that will ultimately be twice the size of Heathrow.